Okay, can I have your attention, please? Your attention. We have an auction. We have an auction tonight. You didn't know we have an auction, but we have an auction tonight. All right, uh, again, uh, Aaron's very kindly. He brought in a donation. Uh, this is like 96, right? Yes. Yeah. You, 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 yeah, but you, you, you aligned it and you changed the capacitors? Come on. You didn't look at it. Okay. Anyway, and we have a nice uh, speaker. I don't think that's a, cro a correct speaker, but it's okay. All right. Um, it is auctioning now. Okay? It's auctioning now. Right now. Okay. Like right now. Okay. Yeah. We're going to go both. All right? We have other things to do this evening, so both are going at the same time. Yeah, go ahead. All right, I want to open it for 10 bucks. Who's got 10 bucks? Wait, where are we? 10, 20. All right, who's got 30? Who's got 30? 30. Who's got 40? Who's got 40? Both. 40. Who's got 50? Who's got 50? 50. Who's got 60? Who's got 60? Who's got 60? Who's got 60? Who's got 55? Who's got 55? Anybody got 55? Oh, 55. Who's got 60? All right. Who's got 65? Who's got 65? Anybody got 65? Sixty dollars going once. 65. Oh, snipes. <laughs> Who's got 70? Who's got 70? Nice speaker. Seventy dollars. Who's got 75? Who's got 75? 75. Seventy dollars going once. Twice sold. Thank you very much, Beth Bennett. And thank the gentleman who donated it to the club. Unfortunately, I don't remember his name. Okay. All right. We got that. And um, all right. So let's bring up our guest speaker. Uh, like I said before, I've known John for about 10 years from Long Island and the uh, swap meets on Long Island. Is that how you pronounce it? Long Island. Um, Long Island? Um, no, I don't do it that way. Sorry, sorry. You make fun of South Jersey. Yes. Hoogies, yeah, hoogies, yeah. All right, so anyway, without uh, further ado, I'd like you to pay attention. All right, we have a guest speaker this evening. I really don't want anybody on their radios. I want everybody to pay attention to our guest speaker, please. All right, out of respect, the man's traveled 87 miles to come, approximately, to come see and speak to you guys. Okay, so please, take a seat. All right, come on, sit down, pay attention. All right. All right, so I'd like you to introduce you to John Kummer, the new publisher of Antique Radio Magazine. Could we have a warm applause? Don't do this. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to thank the Academy for this award. <laughs> Um, let me take a photo of everyone, by the way. Just maybe I could somehow put it on the website or the uh, magazine. Can you just stand over there somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> let me just try this. <laughs> Back straight, right, stomachs in, chins up. Say, trio. Fantastic. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you for inviting me. I'll talk for a few minutes. We have all night. All night. Oh, okay. Great. I on November twenty second, I purchased Antique Radio Classified magazine from John Terry, the former owner. He had it for 24 years. It had existed two years prior under a man named Gary Schneider, 
um, who now lives, or maybe then he lived in Cleveland. He has playthings of the past. You might have seen his uh, website. We owe John Terry a great deal of uh, gratitude and thanks for keeping the magazine alive all these years. Because in the last few years, he lost money on it. Uh, John Terry was an engineer from MIT, worked for Raytheon for 20 years, and for 20 year, 24 years owned the magazine. He took great pride in it. It's a good magazine. Um, I And had someone not taken it over, it would have gone out of business. Why am I able to keep it in business and not John? Well, I come from a different background. I spent 25 years in the publishing business, public, involved with publishing of magazines. In fact, Popular Communications over there, I used to work for that company. They also published CQ. I worked for hobbyist magazines like Modern Electronics. I uh, worked for electronic servicing. I worked for trade magazines like Microwaves and RF and Electronic Buyers News, Electronic Engineering Times. So I knew the magazine business. And I'm a collector. I've been a ham for 40 years now, since 1970. W-A-2-O-J-K, Old John Comer. <laughs> By coincidence. Um, and I'm a advanced class license, which I got in 1973, when he used to go down to the FCC on a, um, on, a, on a corner of Christopher and Washington Street, 641 Washington Street, where the uh, old guy with the patch on the eye used to be there, and he'd put on those old headphones. Anyway, so the comp at home I have about 120 radios and TVs. I restore them. I love working with them. I have everything from battery sets to my TV battery. Well, the, t the radio is from 1920 to 1950. The TV is from the late 40s. That's my specialty. Um, and I do have some. But one of my other loves is old tube audio equipment of the 50s and 60s. For example, in my office opposite me, I have a 1958 Fisher custom Electra Model 2 console, AM, FM, three speakers with a garage turntable. In 1958, it cost $500. In fact, the top of the line Fisher in 1958, the President model, cost $2,600. Uh, no. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a cold. But you had to have a lot of money to spend $2,600. <laughs> you could have bought a house and a car and a lot of things. Um, but anyway, then back to the magazine. Um, I've known, knew the owner, John Terry, since the late 80s because I used to sell him advertising space when I was working on Modern Electronics magazine. In fact, I sold him a radio that he still has in his museum, a Radio Number no. 9 which was a console, it was 1925 entertainment console. Had a wind-up phonograph and a radio one number nine in it uh, with exposed tubes. Um, uh, I found it for a few dollars near me and he paid a lot more than a few dollars for it then. Uh, but that's another story. Um, so my background of knowing the vintage radio area and my publishing background makes me a good candidate for running this. As I said, John came from a background of engineering and as an engineer he had a lot of redundancies. Engineers do that. If you're NASA sending someone to the moon you have to make sure the person comes back. So you have backups, redundancies. If you're publishing a magazine, you don't need all that. Unfortunately for John, he was losing money at the end. 
My goal is to keep this magazine healthy and alive. John had some other offers to buy it, but from companies that would have taken it and folded it into another magazine, and it would have been it would have been lost. That would have been the end of it. John wanted to keep it independent. And since I don't have any of the magazines, <laughs> I was the perfect candidate. Also, coming from a magazine background, I knew how to, well, without sounding cheap, save costs without affecting the quality. Some of you in the room have seen this issue. This is my first one, January. Some of you complimented at me on it. I want to keep it growing and getting better. I'm, I'm sorry, is that a, um, that's the first issue for you? This is the first one for me. A collector's issue? Could uh, I put it on eBay? And, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can put it on eBay. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, by the way, I have brought a bunch of these along with me. Those of you who, I'm sorry. I'm just curious, are you going to go into, how much, what are you charging for the annual, you know, like, uh, Subscriptions, um, and I'm not really here to sell, but I will take your money. But <laughs> um, It's $36 a year, which was the cost beforehand, for the regular, what do they call, periodical rate mailing. If you want it to be sent first class, it's $48. I would, most people have it sent periodical rate. You don't need any more. See, years ago before eBay, people relied on the classified ads very much. Nowadays, no one wants to send an ad in, wait five weeks for it to be published. Now people will put it on something on eBay and have it sold in five days. Uh, but the articles are of interest. The articles are great. And we still do have classifieds in here. I mean, some people have classified in just with their name and address, not even email or phone number, which is amazing to me, but... Um, <laughs> um, anyway, so that... We have, a, we have the print edition. We also have an on a website, antiqueradio.com. Not to be confused with antiqueradios.com, which is the big forum site. And we all, subscribers can look at this online also, as well as a person can subscribe to this online only for $30 a year and not get the print edition. And one, one thing I made, one modification starting with this issue is, it's printed in black and white. The online edition has color photos. It's too expensive to print this in color. It would triple the price. Now, people who subscribe to the periodicals, the mailing one, yeah. will also be able to yeah. see online. Yes. The people who subscribe to this, whether it be in print or online, get certain benefits. One, they could get a free classified ad each month. Um, you could look at it online. You could also, you know the auction reports in here? We've put them in a database. You could go back 10 years online and look at, say I just picked up a Philco 20. I could type in Philco 20. You get a user ID and password, because it's for subscribers only. Type in Philco 20 and see which auctions over the last 10 years sold the Philco 20 and for how much it went for which is very nice. It's a nice benefit. And a lot of people who subscribe don't even know about it. So in the next issue, I'm going to have a little article on, do you know your benefits? <laughs> OK. But now, what am I going to do with this to make it better? All right. Number one, the last couple of issues that John Terry published were double issues. <laughs> November, December, Jan, and uh, September, October, he combined those. We're back to monthly. Because that's what people want. And, you know, that's, you've got to have it there every month. That's number one. Number two is an expansion of the topics of the articles. And this is where, where some people get a little crazy. The, I, can, I am not going to sacrifice our core readers. 
We are going to have the battery set articles every month, the AC set articles, some television, history, um, the usual stuff. But in addition, I have to find a way to get some new readers in. One of the ways... One of the ways is not to touch the table. Uh, one of the ways is, one of the things I'm certainly looking at is tube audio equipment of the 50s. Like the uh, Fisher Custom Electra, you know, something like that. Maybe early 60s, but keep it tube. It is very hot, popular, and a younger audience has been buying this stuff. If you go on eBay any day, you'll see hundreds of auctions of tube equipment from the 50s and 60s, selling for a lot of money. And that is very popular now. And this, these articles will not be added at the expense of battery sets. They'll be added in addition to. Um, maybe articles on test equipment will be thrown in you know, vintage test equipment. Now, I, I've had a lot of people call me on the phone and say, you know, John, I, I used to subscribe to a magazine about jukeboxes. Can you have a jukebox article? And I go, I don't, I think that's going a little too far. Yes, it's an amplifier, and it's a turntable and a mechanical device, but we're not going to get away from the core audience too much. Otherwise, it's not antique radio classified. But I feel the addition of vintage tube equipment is okay. That I feel comfortable with. I'm not going to have articles, for those of you who know tubes, especially the audio ones, there's a lot of myths surrounding tubes. <laughs> okay. All right, now, for example, and there happens to be a website called tubeworld.com. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but they'll sell tubes. They'll say, you know what? A, I don't know if anyone knows what a getter is in a tube. All right. All right. It's only used during the manufacturing process. Yet collect audio files or audio fools feel that the shape of the getter affects the fidelity of the tube. All right, or whether the plate is a gray or black color, or if it's straight or ribbed, or, I mean, and it goes, or the, or the shape of the glass, et cetera, et cetera. Or all the keywords, you put stuff on either. I know, I know. Kills all these keywords. You're, you're, you're right. And just because you can't hear it doesn't mean it's not yeah. here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I am going to stay away from that. I was thinking of an April Fool's article, maybe. <laughs> That, that I could see doing, yes. but we're not gonna, I'm not going to get tied up in that because it's a lot of junk. All right, let's face it. Come on. Um, we're, we're intelligent people. A lot of us work on our radios. We know our theory. And a black plate versus a gray plate does not matter. And I'm not going to get in that argument with those crazy people. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's just not going to happen. Uh, a good example. I bought a, I, uh, two years ago, I bought 7,000 radio tubes from someone. Right. Without any, getting the great detail, in the bottom of one of the boxes was a Western electric tube. <laughs> Another great myth. <laughs> a 274A globe-shaped engraved base. <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a 5Y3 rectifier. It's a $10 tube, all right? Some crazy person paid $2,800 on eBay. Yeah, but you might have a bit of love. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he was in the United States, not Asia, which was another shock. And he paid, he paid within an hour on, on pay. Was the gentleman in Texas? Yes, he was. He just, he just paid me 25 Yeah, yeah, all right, the same guy. Yeah, with, with an Asian name. He has an Asian name. Very. He paid immediately. No hassles. I triple packed it, you know, right? But, yeah, but, but, but all I'm saying is um, that's the one place I'm not going to. We don't need 
fantasy in the magazine, unless it's an April Fool's issue. Um, and but so there are. I am looking for any anyone has an idea on an article. That is our biggest challenge: finding articles to write. Why don't you look at some of the old popular electronics and uh, electronic experiment magazines and see, like, for example, what kinds of things they used to do? For example, tips and techniques. Uh, they used to have, like, Tom and Jerry, whatever that name was, two guys. Yeah. 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 Oh. I mean, the things that people would look for. Oh, uh, I can't, but someone's got to write it. You know, and it's hard. A lot of people promise to write articles all the time. Oh, they do. And, and, <laughs> and we know it doesn't. They promise up and down, and you know, they, and they don't do it. And it's do look, yeah, either work or family or whatever. But I know I agree with you. There are things to look back on. Um, I wouldn't, you know, it's I wouldn't mind taking. An issue of whatever popular electronics from 1958, and printing some little story saying, uh, you know, just just to take a look back, you know, uh, QST does it for, but they do it with their own magazine. We also have a homebrew. You can do it occasionally. You could probably do an article about radios in the building for a time. Yeah. Or things that people do in their shop. Yeah. Take pictures of a guy working in well, the shop. Well, that's that's another thing we're looking at restoration articles. And for example, um, I'm probably gonna I I, I like Fisher stuff. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a Fisher restoration article. Uh, uh, before and after pictures, you know, stuff like that. Or I wish you know I had pictures from last year. I was. Working on a uh, 1939 um, Stromberg Carlson, you know the one with the strange-shaped dial in our dials. A coil was bad. I found out how to fix the coil. Now, you know that saves the radio. A lot of times, in the first ten um, lines, the coil you'll find the where the break is. I was lucky enough to do that. That's a great article. John Terry, the former owner, didn't like restoration articles that much. He was afraid of uh, litigious issues, like someone gets electrocuted. Well, all you have to do is, in the first paragraph, say, you're working with dangerous voltage, watch what you're doing, or you will die. You know, and, and that's the end of it. You know, it's, that's really the end of it, and that takes care, that covers your, your butt. So, excuse me, John. So what you're saying is you're soliciting for articles. Absolutely. You happen to be speaking to a group that are incredibly intelligent. I mean, not every article can be used, but we're looking for articles on history, maybe in vintage test equipment, um, you know, things like that. You know, just uh, again, just no audio fool articles. You know, you know that that we're not doing, but. If, even if you're you're restoring a mono ICO FM tuner from 1959, I think that's okay. A tube tuner that is acceptable. Um, I'm not looking for a Panasonic receiver from the 90s. You know, that's no. Um, what I, I'd love to see an article. Let's say take a Garrard turntable from the late 50s, like a RC88, which some of you might know. If some, because I'm always bad with mechanical things. I don't need a schematic for electronics, but to show someone how to clean the grease out of it, and uh, the hardened grease, and fix the idler wheel, and stuff like that. We have our own author that wrote a book on 45s, as you well know. Yeah, yeah okay. You'll be selling his books. Not yes, I do. <laughs> um, right now, okay. I'm... I, I have no intention of raising rates. I, I did add two and three year subscription rates, which John Terry didn't have, and those are discounted. Um, also, I, I think he had them, but they weren't discounted. Well, well, he did. He did for years ago, but stopped. Yeah. And then he would say, "Well, I'll, if you get a two year one, I'll add an extra issue." And I, I did it this way. I said, "I mean, let's make it simple. One year, thirty six bucks." Two years, thirty-four dollars a year. Three years, thirty-two dollars a year. 
makes it keep it simple. I also added another thing on our. Uh, we have a a marketplace, a, a, a you know shopping cart site. Besides selling books on the hobby, I added PayPal as a payment method. And I got to tell you something. P more than half the people switched to using PayPal to pay for items on our shopping cart. And it's people don't like giving credit card numbers as much anymore. And with PayPal, it's simple enough. So that's another thing. People asked for it. I gave it to them. Um, Excuse me, now, what's, what is, how do you work the nuts and bolts of the, all the books that were sold on ARC? Where, where are those books? Okay, what, the inventory? Yeah. All right, when I, back, honestly, I started working with John Terry to buy this last September. And it wasn't until November 22nd we signed an agreement. I got the magazine and I bought out his existing inventory of books. So now I have them sitting in my house. Yeah. Now also, let me add, John Terry, being the saver he was, had 24 years of back issues, one, between 100 and 400 copies of each. I mean, in other words, between one and four boxes. He had almost 1,000 boxes of magazines. And, all right. He had a huge storage facility for this off the site. And I said to him, I said to him not to touch the table again. I said, John, I'll take one box of each. So that ended up being 289 boxes, one for each year, month. I came up there in a cargo van, took one third of them, because that's, uh, each box is 20 pounds, two ton, a one ton van. The rest I put in storage up there, and I'll go up and get the rest soon. It's sitting in cold storage. Um, but I took all the books back, they all fit in my car. And when people order them, I just put them in you know, a box or in a nice padded envelope and send them out. Um, and they go all over the world. I've shipped to probably a dozen different countries. Um, we also have foreign subscriptions to the magazine. Europe is $70 a year. One thing I'm going to be pushing for or promoting in the future is online-only subscriptions for foreign readers because it's $30 a year instead of them spending 70 And, of course, the photos are in color online. But uh, any subscriber here on your label, uh, you will have the password and user ID and you could go look at it along with the auction results and some other things. So that, that's sort of some of the stuff I'm doing. Now, John also ran the February meet in Westford. All right. It is still on this year. On uh, February, uh, I think it's February 20th. Uh, I made him pay for an ad in here. <laughs> February 20th. It'll be the last one he's running. Now, I'm looking for someone else to run it. My idea, just... I don't know if you know the New York City area well, but right below the Throgs Neck Bridge is Fort Totten, which is an old army base. There must be 50 buildings there. I was thinking about moving it there, possibly. I don't know yet. I have a feeling the New England Antique Radio Club is going to take it over and keep it up there. I figured having it near the Throgs Neck Bridge gives Long Island... So Connecticut, Southern New York State, and New Jersey access to a real meet, which we don't have a huge one in the in the New York City area. It's a free, no, your your guy, you know, your meet. So that's something else. Um, my my goal is to try to attract some new readers, and I got to admit, some younger readers. Let's, I'm 55 years old. We can look around the room here. We know the average age, approximately. I don't see... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, it's like it's like I'm a ham, and you know, the, there's the organization, the QCWA, which is the Quarter Century, Quarter Century Wireless Association. 
The last I heard, the average age there is 78. Average. All right. Um, the average ham is radio operators now in the late 50s. I felt the tube audio stuff and maybe some other stuff might attract a new audience. This magazine has 3,000 paid readers, subscribers. Ten years ago, it had 9,000. 9,000 to 3,000. And that was due to a number of reasons. One, the, the internet. Two, our ranks getting older. Um, I think specialty tr magazines are still very viable. And I think by just expanding the base a little bit, we can uh, get the membership up again. Not, not to 9,000. The other thing I'm working on is the website, antiqueradio.com. I want it easier to navigate. We have our online subs. As I said, we have the auction prices. I mean, we have a big, we must have 300 links on there to other sites. Um, John Terry, the former owner, his main emphasis was to make sure the articles in this magazine were accurate. That was his emphasis. So out of the, say, 300 links on his website, I found a quarter of them to be dead or out of date. I'm a big web believer. I'm a big web guy. So I spent a lot of time on that. We may even have some advertising on the website, those little banner ads that you see, the square ads or the rectangular ads at some time. How am I going to get more readers? How am I going to do things? It all has to do with promotion. You guys promote yourselves, your club, through different ways. Um, I do it mine. I've been in publishing for a long time. I believe in the old expression, the more stuff you throw against the wall, the better chance it'll stick. For example, I've made sure our website is optimized so search engines pick it up. Now you got, I don't know if you guys did that with your website. Um, it's called, the fancy name is Search Engine Optimization. I don't know if there's a webmaster here. Right. Okay. That, I'm sure it's been worked on to make sure when someone types in New Jersey and antique radio, your name comes up at the top. Um, that's something I'm working on. I'm showing up uh, John Terry, and this is not a knock of him, but he went to his meet in Westford, Mass. in February and went to Rochester, and that was it. My goal is to come to meets like yours. But you attended our forum. Yeah, I mean, before I officially bought the magazine. But my goal is to show up at the meets with books and magazines and get the word out. Be more visible again. That's the only way I could do things. Uh, I might be doing some direct mail campaigns to subscribers. Another thing is John Terry never collected email addresses. When someone renews, I ask if they have an email address. Some people don't. Fine. So, hey, none of that. <laughs> uh, but I, I believe, for example, in the future, like right now, I send out a renewal postcard when your subscription is up. There's no reason why I can't send you an email saying, hey, your subscription is up. It saves the cost of paper, saves the cost of postage, and, you know. So, you know, I want to I try to promote the magazine. We need writers. I tell that to everyone. I wrote it in the little front page piece here that we need writers. Uh, we do not pay, uh, let me tell you, we do not pay for articles. Just to let you know, we have a little blurb on your name, address, and what you collect. It's like a little mini ad for you. It's a labor of love. Um, but we, we need, that's the only way this is going to survive, and that's, that's our biggest challenge is writers. Yeah, but they have 160,000 members, Yeah, and they, they can afford it. I, I can't. And John Terry couldn't afford it. 
you know. And I understand. I tell people, if you don't want to write, I understand. <coughs> I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, you can get some good people out there who are willing to spend their time with them together, but, you know, it's something for my life. But sometimes, you know, maybe a little, I don't know, just something to make them feel like they're fine. Well, I mean, I mean, we give them free subscriptions, you know, stuff like that. I mean, you got to, I mean, if you write one article a year, I, I like to, if you want a free subscription, I could, if you wrote two articles a year, I'd give you a free subscription or something. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm cold. But, you know, that's, that's what we need. And a lot of times, writing an article doesn't have to be that fancy, because we have an editor, or at least I'm getting an editor, or I'll do it. An article could be simply, uh, you've restored a radio, you take some before and after photos, you describe something that happened, you send the photos in, you could do it like in a, just a page or two and we could expand on it and make it look real pretty and make it look like you're, you know, uh, a famous writer. It doesn't, you know, that kind of thing, you know. You could put more pictures on the website than you put in the actual printed article. Yeah, right? we could do that too. It's You could also have some video on the website. Well, that is something else. I'm, I know, for example, when I'm, I'm going to be restoring a, a Fisher uh, piece of audio equipment from the 50s, I am going to have a link to a YouTube video I'm going to make. Uh, and that's so easy to do now with a point and shoot camera. <coughs> you could show things as you're doing them, even down to the soldering. You could then show the finished product working, and you put it up on YouTube. I mean, that's and, and you could have and they you know there are programs for free that have put the little credits in there. You know the dialogue. You know um, whatever restoring the Fisher X Y Z. So that's what we're doing. Um, I brought, anyway, does anyone have any questions? Any, any, back there. How do you find your password so you can go online? I can't tell you it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll show you, I'll show you on, on the way out. Okay. Yeah, it's in the part of the subscription uh, um, uh, of the code there. Um, we got copies. If you have one at home, I don't know how many I have with me, maybe 40. If you have one at home, you know, you, know, you, you probably don't need another one. But, um, you know, just please take them. Um, you know, anyone who wants one, we got... Here, I'll help you. Could you find issue number one? to subscribe to this at one point in their life. Can you can I get a show of hands? Or you still do. Or you still do. How many do now? All right. All right. All right. All right. That's good. How many stop subscribing for whatever reason? For whatever reason. Okay. That's fine. Um, I ended, by the way, in my case, I stopped subscribing six years ago. I'll be honest with you, because of different reasons. For me, it was at the time it was a financial reason, and I was going through a slump in the hobby. Some people go through slumps, some financial, some just say, "I just don't find it interesting anymore." I want. You can easily email me, dears. I have an 800 number. You could call me. Tell me what you think. All right. Bye. Tell me what you think. I want to hear any kind of idea, no matter how crazy it is, because you never know. 
And that's any questions? Any other questions besides this? I just want to add that in regards to the articles, yeah. you know, uh, if you, you know Lud Sibley, he used to do the OTB articles. Yeah. And he works the same way. You really don't have to be a Hemingway. Yes, right. Just a couple of, it's a good topic. It's an interesting topic. A couple of pictures. Yeah. I know, you, could, you know, there you got two pages already. Yeah. And, and you guys can fix it up, add a couple of that's it. And it really, it really does come out nice. So you know, a lot of people hesitant. I don't know how. Yeah. You know, we have, have, we have people know. write it in crayon. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> you guys really do a good door job. Perfect. All right, I'll let I'll let you go. I, I've overdone it. I know. No, no, no. I overdone. It. All right. Um, we want to thank John for coming down, and uh, we really appreciate it, John. So. Um, thank you. And we wish you the best of luck, also. And. Um, we would like to extend you the courtesy of a, a subscription to our club, our newsletter, and a membership too. Uh, can we really I, can I uh, get your? Is it? Can I give your club a membership, a, a, a subscription for free? Yeah. Sure, why not? I, mean, I don't know if you have a library where you do put them. Yes. But I will also get you guys a subscription in the later. Great. Well, give me the address where you want it to. Okay, great, John. Thank you very much. And uh, John will be around if anybody wants some personal one-on-one -on -one questions. Um, but right now we want to turn it over to Al and our de expedition. But one 30 second moment in time, this was brought to my attention. I'm not sure what this is, but it's supposed to be a gift to, where is it? Well, the, John, the, the, uh, the rationale behind this was that uh, uh, somebody in our club, we talk about young members, one of our club members just turned 21 this year. So we thought that we would help him celebrate his 21st birthday and thank him for all the work that he's done in our InfoAge library with a six pack. <laughs> and that new member to adulthood is uh, our very own John Tomitsky. Yeah, congratulations, John. But you must open it in front of Happy you. birthday, guys. Just open it. <laughs> Make believe it's a month ago, but the good part is nobody's going to take it from you. <laughs> well, it looks like there. It's a real radio. <laughs> yeah, it's something in there. What is it, John? What is it? Mold books spread. <laughs> I think that's better than the uh, Dos Equis. So congratulations again, John. All right, excellent, excellent. All right, guys, we're gonna turn this over to Al. All right, so please pay attention. I guess turn off uh, Morris Appliance until everybody can see. That's my wish. That will work. Yeah, okay, and wel welcome to the D Expedition. I think I can get away with a little less gain there. Uh, Okay, as of yesterday, I was a little... You can't hear, Steve? In fact, this, does this sound as tinny to you as it does to me? Uh, I don't know. Anyway. Sounds good. How's that? Okay. As of yesterday, I wasn't sure this was going to come off because we had some really ugly local noise yesterday afternoon which fortunately has not come back in any big way so you know, like that so uh, the the presentation got stretched out in order to fill in for the radio listening we weren't going to do so I'll try to go through it quickly but um, here we go and I sure wish I knew why that was flickering 
cable on the projector? I, I wiggled the cable into the yeah, yeah. Yeah. screen's okay. Yeah, it must be Harry's screen. It must yeah. be. Harry. <laughs> Try the other end, which is not screwed tight. We'll live with it. Anyway, so I want to encourage you all to participate in the DX contest, and that's what we're trying to do tonight. Um, okay. DX just means distance to ham radio guys. It means things in Afghanistan and offshore. But for us, let's just settle for distance, you know, stations that are far away. I'm um, going to take a quick look at the DX contest rules because I'm not sure everybody has looked at them. And the thing has kind of been crafted to be fun and not be a big complicated deal to participate in. So, you know, we want to use vintage radios to hear things. Eligibility open only to members in good standing of the New Jersey Antique Radio Club. So, well, Marsha already beat you up for your dues, but uh, that's <laughs> what the rules say. The, the period of the contest is from Friday the 21st to uh, Sunday the 30th. Okay, the reason for that is you get Friday night, Saturday night of that weekend and Friday night, Saturday night of that weekend for those of you who are still employed uh, and you have the rest of the week in between. So it's about, about 10 days. I use the word session in the rules and it's not a 10-day contest. You participate for one day you can participate all 10 days and pick your best results, but but the 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 session is one 24-hour period. You can submit two logs, so you might have two sessions, noon to noon. You know you can't hear anything in the middle of the day anyway, so you want all night. You may use only one receiver during any particular session, and the reason I put that rule in was a long time ago. I was involved in a crystal set DX contest and the way you did that you had a Sony 2010 with the 40 memory buttons on it and and then you you know you jumped around till you found the station then you turned the crystal set till you could hear the same thing didn't matter whether you could understand it or not you heard it and logged it so uh -uh, we're not going to do that one radio what can you hear uh, frequencies, broadcast band, 530 to 1600. Yeah, I know the broadcast band goes to 1700, but most of the old radios won't do that, so we're not going to count that. Um, we have a number of receiver categories. Pick the one you fit into, but just for instance, crystal radios, primitive tube receivers, home brews and whatnot, one or two tubes, Whatever's in the power supply doesn't matter, but one or two tube radios are primitive. Class C is battery sets, 1920s battery sets. You know, I'm sorry. I, I told somebody earlier to use their 1920s AC set in this category. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, Don't do it. I, 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 I didn't know my own rules. <laughs> <laughs> Again, what power supply doesn't matter. There can be all kinds of integrated circuits and ICs in the power supply. We don't care. Uh, but run your battery sets. Class D is where most people are going to fall. Other tube radios sold for home entertainment. We separated the the communication receivers out into into class E supposedly because they work so much better but it's not true uh, it's it's how well it's how well you know how to use it what, and what what your location your antenna is like uh, we put in a transistor radio category some years back uh, I picked 1970 so that kind of cuts out all the digital stuff but you have some favorite transistor radio, go ahead and use it. I like this Philco T9 over here. That's a, a, a way cool radio and gives a good account of itself. And based on the uh, based on the um, the D-Expedition two years ago, 
we introduced this lightweight category, which was spurred on by some really inexpensive modern Sony radios that work surprisingly well for being almost nothing at all. And so anything you have that weighs less than a pound, and you can see one of these over here on the table. It's one of the little Sonys with a, uh, that weighs about three ounces with three quarters of a pound of 1930 radio dial on it. <laughs> Phil, pick that thing up. Oh, shit. And wave, wave it around for them. So anyway, it's a lot of fun. Do something like that. I think, I think Walt had, had built one of these things. And, uh, so there's all kinds of ways you can do this. Antennas, anything you like. And I guess that even includes active antennas that may have semiconductors in there. I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to give anybody an undue advantage, so don't worry about that. Um, yeah, contest. Is like a 40 dB low noise amplifier? Or? Yeah, I, I don't think it'll do you any good. <laughs> I really don't believe it'll do you any good. Uh, and we have, we'll have special awards for first-time contest, contestants. So if it's your first time in the contest, mark that on your log when you send it in. Uh, logs, uh, you do a log for each session. Uh, each log header should contain the contestant's name. All of this paperwork is on the website, including the logs in Excel. If you just want to do them directly on your computer, in Excel, you can just go ahead and do that. And Tom, who's the, uh, uh, the the scoring person, will accept those by email if if that's the way to do it. So we don't have to kill trees and lick stamps if you don't care to. Um, logs must be postmarked not later than midnight, February seventh. That gives you a week after the close of the contest to get your log in. Uh, logs may be submitted as email attachments. That information about Tom's address is, is widely available. Uh, scoring, uh, great cir we, we did great circle distances from Freehold originally because that's where the club was at the time. Uh, there's a list of the official distances and anything that isn't on the list we'll, we'll look up and calculate it. Uh, if you're more than 100 miles from Freehold, let us know that, and we'll make adjustments in the way we score. Uh, once in a while, uh, we get some remote logs sent in by traveling salesmen and such like. So South Jersey, is that within 100 miles? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, I, I did that real careful so that all of New Jersey is within 100 miles. We're always watching. <laughs> And special rule number one, this was, and I'll, I'll show you a log a little bit on down here. Uh, you can only claim one Cuban time station. Uh, back when we had sunspots and things were good, you could go down the dial and you could hear six Cuban time stations. They're 1,300 miles apiece. You, add them all, you know, it's no fun. We're not going to do that. You, you get to count one radio ray low, and that's it. Okay, let me give you an example of what you can do with a fairly mundane radio without a whole lot of effort. And this is, the, this is a Zenith I happen to own, loop antenna in the window. This is in Jersey City. You're all out of excuses. I can do DX in Jersey City. You probably can do it where you are. So let me change to... How many miles are you from the Empire State Building, do you think? Uh, less than 10. The, re the real problem is I'm three miles from WMCA and Boresight on their antenna. <laughs> Push this to box. And go to the next slide. Yeah. The new AM 740, by the way, presents Jim Galloway's leading band that will fill in November 13th. Matthewsfurniture.com. One T. The Bulldog face tennis.
Jesse Tech. Bulldog Saturday begins at 9 a.m. here on the home of the dogs, News Talk 750 WSB. I'm Jennifer Griffith, live in the double. Well, everything you're talking about in the book, it seems like they've all changed their sense. The Detroit Symphony Orchestra presents a chorus one Thursday through Saturday at Orchestra Hall. The Detroit Institute of Arts features Avidon fashion photographs. Plus, Friday Night Live, Target Sunday. Don't miss the accidental mummies of Guanajuato at the Detroit Science Center. Friday, Bob Dylan performs at the Fox Theater. Don Henley at Caesar's Lunch. And in Huntington. When I heard the words prostate cancer, my first thought was, what are my options? <laughs> President Obama has won two big endorsements for his health care plan, which could come up for a vote in the House on Saturday. The U.S. News correspondent Bob Frost has more on today's endorsement by the American... Ed, did you ever catch Nevada before? No, never caught Nevada before. Uh, like I say, I don't know why they said Nevada, but uh, anyway. A couple of more quick points. Broadcast band propagation, daytime if you hear 100 miles, that's far. At night, you get long distance via Skywaves. Uh, the what website that's not Skywaves? Uh, yeah, that, that, that was that was well that that was the name of the the name of my website. That was the name of the antenna I used to sell in the old days. So anyway, and they, well, actually, it's one of those antennas hanging over the museum, feeding the uh, the amp. Uh, yeah, sunspots happen on an eleven year cycle. Uh, there's the history all, all the way back to 1700 when somebody started counting. It's up and down. It's all over. But this last cycle uh, bottomed out in in 09 and actually was supposed to have bottomed out before that. And the predict predictions kept saying that by 11 we'd be in great shape they've been sliding the predictions back we still don't have any sunspots I may never live to see sunspots again the result of all of that is I really believe that overall signal strength is less than it used to be there's still distant stations to be heard some of the paths still hold up but things just aren't as strong so keep that in mind a um, couple of examples of that here was um, a log from that that zenith back in, in 2004. This was before the radio Raylo rule, and and that's why I put the rule in because this just, just got stupid. There's three of those, but I haven't heard Cuba in a long time. Uh, of course, things are tougher up in Jersey City, but it used to be you'd hear the the. Does everyone know about Radio Raylo? The, the clock ticks. And even if you can't hear the clock ticks, they identify with an R in Morse about two seconds after the minute. You hear did odd it, did odd it. You heard Cuba, put it in the log, you're done. Um, but uh, also at that, at, at that time, I was, I was able to hear Denver. Um, Radio Vision Christiana, that's a good one to be looking for on 5.30. They used to be real easy, not as strong as it used to be. And now there's some multicultural radio thing on 5.30 out of Toronto. So you have to be a little careful about whether you're really hearing those guys. I'll have another comment about that here in a second. Uh, another way to log Cubans, you know, they, those guys don't identify. First of all, they speak Spanish. Second, they don't identify anyway. But you can, but they do have radio networks. You can do things like this. There's a station in, in San Germán on 600. There's another one in Arroyo or Arena or whatever it's called on 670. Same network. 
you have a station like that sweep sec you have a radio like that sweeps second hand on the uh, on the zenith you can check those two frequencies if the same program is on both frequencies log it and uh, there it is that was uh, it's called parallel it's a, a standard DX technique and uh, uh, that's a, a way to log a couple of Cubans uh, you'll see when I did this log I came down the log and I had put in guys like Atlanta and St. Louis and Nashville as I heard them but then when I got lucky down here I took those back out so that's sort of a way to do it in your log you have the date and time, the frequency, the call, and the location. You can look up the distance on our distance chart. You can do your own scoring and send it in. We'll double check it. At, by comparison, <coughs> wait, everybody stands up here, coughs. Uh, here was the little ARC 5 receiver from the museum last year. Now, the, the problem I'm getting into in Jersey City is, for instance, the the HD radio sidebands on 8080 keep from hearing New Orleans, you know that kind of stuff. So I came down here and gave it a gave it a shot, and uh, so yeah, there's your bread and butter, Atlanta, Chicago, Waterloo, Iowa was a good one. K KXEL on 1540, go looking for them. That's a little tough. There's about three stations there, and you have to catch it just right. Uh, but that's a, a good point generator. KMOX is considerably farther away than Chicago. And you guys that are listening tonight, I don't want to hear any complaints, because I heard them on the ARC-5 here a little while ago. So you can do it. Conditions here aren't red hot. You're in a you're in a, a steel and concrete building. You're up against the windows. We've got to wire up the yeah, flagpole outside. The yeah, you got to fit. Yeah, yeah, in fact, and, yeah, and the screen rooms are up above you here too, helping to screen the place. So, um, <clears throat> but but you can hear stuff from here. So just just concentrate on it a little bit. Um, more Chicago. New Orleans is one of my favorites because that's 1,100 miles away. And once you get out away from New York City a little bit, they, you can hear them. I don't know how they're doing this year. Uh, this one was a real surprise to me a couple of years ago. ZIZ -Z in, in St. Kitts. Nobody has a radio station on 555, but yes, they do. And if you look at their website and figure out what their programming is, they don't, they don't, uh, identify real reliably but about 11 or 12 o'clock at night they go to BBC News and you can you can pick that up and log them that way uh, w, WHO in Des Moines as long as you can null out the station out in Hunterdon County that's another another thousand mile station you go looking for and uh, Radio Vision Christiana in Turks and Caicos those guys used to identify like right after the hour reliably in English you know, I, I think I logged them on the crystal set one year. They don't do that anymore. But last year, what I ended up doing, they're parallel with a station in Patterson, New Jersey on 1330. And that's how I finally was sure that I heard these guys. So those are the kind of techniques, those are the kind of things you're up against. Uh, give it a shot. A uh, couple of words about, about the band plan what's what's on the air now there's hardcore BBC, BCB DX guys that go you know listening for the 500 watt stations in Fiji or something and claim they hear them or whatever for our purposes you're looking for the big guys and we have this list that's floating around the room here that's on the website 99% of the stations that are going to be on the winning logs are on that list. Okay, and here's what happens. We're in uh, ITU region 2, which means we have 10 kilohertz spacing. Okay, you know that. Uh, there are some clear channels designated, and they aren't really clear. They're shared. But these channels are occupied by 50 kilowatt stations 
these are the guys you can hear. This is WWL in New Orleans, KOA in Denver, a couple of stations down in Texas, and they're on these frequencies. The rest of the frequencies uh, are divided up. There's regional channels, 5 and 10 kilowatt stations. It's tough because there's more than one on a channel. Most, most of the ones you hear aren't going to be that far away. Don't worry about that. And then there's some local channels. These guys, they're a hopeless DX case because there's 30 guys on each channel. Some of them cut back to 5 watts at night and things like that. So concentrate on the big guys. Work your way down that list. Also on that list, I have the local stations. So you can use those as frequency reference. I like to find WABC on seven on 770. You go 10 kilohertz up, there's Chicago. You go 10 kilohertz down, there's Detroit. You go another 10 kilohertz down, there's uh, Atlanta. And 10 kilohertz below that is uh, is is Toronto. So there's, that was the DX I showed you in the video, and, and that's the way you want to work the whole band. You know, pick a, pick a section and concentrate on it. Um, just a, a word about intercontinental DX. It just doesn't happen, especially under current conditions. And about all you really ever hear is because Europe is on 9 kilohertz channel spacing, you'll sometimes hear heterodynes. Hasn't been as prevalent in the last couple of years, but I did notice the other early in the evening. I did hear a one kilohertz beat on. It's not WKBW anymore. Whatever they call themselves in WWKB in Buffalo on 1520. And sure enough, you you can hear the carrier from Saudi Arabia, but you'll never that you'll just never recover any audio from it. A uh, little bit about about targets. You know, here we are at InfoAge. There's this. These are 500 mile circles. So you get out out outside of 500 miles. That's that's DX. That's the stuff you're looking for. And uh, you know, Atlanta's down here, and Chicago's up here. Uh, the guys in Iowa are out there about a thousand miles. KMOX is almost 900 miles. Uh, Denver used to be possible. Uh, uh, we've had people log WBPA in Dallas, WWL in New Orleans is pretty easy. Uh, Cuba's down here. Now all of this stuff is an overwater path, so even with deteriorating conditions, it's it's worth taking a look at. Uh, I did log Radio Vision Christiana and ZIZ last year, just with the loop and the little Arc Five standing over in the, in the middle of the museum. Uh, the other, and I'll, I'll talk about loops here a little bit, the, the beauty of a loop is you can null a station and hear another station. And the prime example of that is these guys down in Caracas, Venezuela. They're on 750. You tune in Atlanta on 750, you turn the antenna so you can't hear Atlanta, when you hear Spanish underneath, it's probably Caracas. There's a there's a Spanish station, 750 Spanish station in Cuba, but I don't think that's what you hear. And what these what these guys at least used to identify that, that their call is YVKS, but they call themselves RCR, Radio Caracas Radio, as opposed to Radio Caracas TV. I don't know, it's the Department of Redundancy Department or something. But in Spanish, that's Ere Se Ere. And they really would ID uh, when the sunspots were better. You go there and listen for 15 minutes and, and log a 2,000 mile station. So give it a try again this year when you're home and it's a little quieter than it is here. I couldn't, I couldn't pick anything up on that frequency earlier this evening. Um, Loop antennas, uh, I'm, I'm a believer, they're easy to make, uh, and in most cases they'll work better than a wire. We've talked about loops before, and there's, there's, there's links to plans on the website, and there's a couple floating around here, including the caveman loop with the, the, lashed, up, the lashed up frame. And uh, 
what happens is the turns of the loop are this way, maximum frequency pickup is off the off the ends of the turns. If it's a flat loop, it's that way. If it's a bar, it's actually this way because the turns go around the other way. But 90 degrees off that, you have a deep null. So you can beat back a station like, like the monkey chatter from WCBS and here, New Orleans on, on 870, fairly listenable. Uh, so I, I highly recommend loops or radios that already have loops built in them like like this this Philco portable over here in fact I made a little turntable to go under mine and you can just waltz it around and uh, uh, do the loop tricks um, we've we've got resources on and I, I'm pretty sure Dave has a link out of the main NJARC page to this page, but if you need to write it down, it's www.njarc.ar88.net. Uh, or if you just go to my domain, ar88.net, and drill down to my website, then there's a link to the NJARC stuff. Hopefully we get, we get going with cascading style sheets and all that stuff, and we'll, we'll get this all in one place, but uh, I need it controlled. But here's that target list I talked about. And what I did, I just went down the whole band in frequency. I rated these as difficult, you know, difficulty if it's a star, it's an easy thing like Philadelphia, but they're there for a frequency reference. And uh, you can just scan down the band, see what you can hear, and, you know, log them as you go. You should be able to hear Atlanta, uh, Nashville, maybe three Chicago stations and whatever else. And you, so you got to start there and then you fill in whatever else you can get. And uh, so you get 10 good stations and you shut the radio off and go to sleep. Uh, it's, it's not a big deal. It's not some big arduous thing where you have to spend 40 hours to do this. A couple hours at night, if you really get into it, maybe you get up at 5 in the morning and, and, and see what happens early in the morning. I know uh, a few years back, Denver came in real well at, at 5 o'clock. Another thing I've observed is early in the evening, you know, 7, 8 o'clock, is a great time to be doing this because everybody IDs regularly. You get into the middle of the night, you say, oh, it's the middle of the night, I'm going to really hear DX and all this kind of stuff, except what you hear is coast-to-coast -coast radio, you know, these various things and you're you know with luck you're, you're waiting for the hour for the guys to ID and things like that so yeah stay up all night if you care to but I'd quit about I'd quit about midnight and get up again at five and take a listen for for what you didn't hear at five in the morning so if you haven't done this give it a shot you know you don't need a sophisticated radio you don't need an outrageous antenna just see what you can hear work your way down the list and, and see what's there. So, anyway, uh, wishing you, oh, are there questions? Sir? Can you answer more than once, like, to be in different categories? Uh, yes, yeah. You can, you can enter, you know, a crystal set yeah. and a, a communication receiver or whatever, two entries. And in fact, yeah, you could, you can do something every night and then pick your best two if you're, you know, if you're really into it. But you can send in two entries. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to send them in the same class because then you beat yourself. But uh, <laughs> anyway, further questions? Phil. Uh, in the U.S., I guess the highest uh, power is 50 kilowatts. Yes. What is, what is it in Canada? I, think, I don't think there's anything more than 50 kW in Canada. Um, some of those guys like Caracas and things like that are a hundred or a couple hundred kilowatts. Uh, I think probably, we probably have an agreement with Canada that everybody's 50 kW. I don't know what, you know, there used to be, there used to be rock crushing stations in Mexico. I've never been sure that I've heard Mexico. Uh, I think, yeah, XERF, XERB, those guys, that, they were let. What was that back in the 50s, 60s? 
Yeah, they, they, they were legendary. Wolfman Jack. And <laughs> I, I never, I, I wasn't into it at that point. I didn't hear it. And earlier than that, uh, Dr. Brinkley, too. You know, okay, other questions? Yes. Okay. Maybe I'll get uh, back over the head for this one, but uh, I've never done this stuff before. But wouldn't it make sense to perhaps have some sort of a dish antenna so if there's something broadcasting behind you that you don't want to hear, then you could directionally go to, you know, across the country? Well, that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing with the loop. Okay. Except the loop, the, the loop has 180 degree ambiguity. Okay. So you know. You can only you can like like what you'd really want is a cardioid pattern. Okay. You you can do this by phasing two stationary wire antennas, and there's boxes that'll do that. Oh, okay. In fact, in fact, Rob Flory brought one of those to the last the expedition, and uh, that's kind of a lot of fussing around. Okay. But that that will you know that like the problem with the loop is if the if the station is on the same frequency as New York City. Yeah. And is in that direction, yeah, then, then the loop the loop doesn't doesn't do it for you. Yeah. So what you want is a you know a heart shaped pattern so you can null the local station and yeah, hear the so guy. So that that gets sophisticated. There's ways to do that, okay. but you know, uh, re, get get on the web and read the the broadcast band DX hardcore guys and there's you know flag antennas yeah, and phased. Okay. Phase things and all that kind of stuff. Static, I I'm not Rob Florida. Yeah. <laughs> few, few, few of us are. <laughs> Anybody, anything else? Okay, we'll just do a little. Have your feet on the way out and then you can.